Baron, how do you treat the acute attacks of MS? So the first point I want to make is that not every attack of MS needs to be treated. The mainstay of treatment for attacks, if we choose to treat, is high-dose intravenous steroids. Usually we use a preparation called methylprednisolone. The best evidence is that giving a course of intravenous methylprednisolone speeds the recovery from an attack. But most attacks improve on their own. And there's not any evidence um, to date that giving steroids, methylprednisolone, makes you recover better than you would if you don't get steroids. It just makes you recover more quickly. Therefore, if, if an attack is of minor functional impact, so for instance, if a person has some numbness and tingling that's not really interfering with the use of any limb and is only minimally uncomfortable, then I generally tell the person, Let, let's tough it out. It's probably going to go away on its own and, and let's avoid steroids. Because even though steroids given, say, five days in high doses intravenously is generally very safe, there are still occasional patients who will have a problem occasionally serious from that course of, of steroids. For example, you can have psychiatric symptomatology that's sometimes severe. You can cause the blood sugars to go out of whack like you're, you're diabetic. You can cause blood pressure to go up. Occasionally, there can be um, bleeding from the gastrointestinal tract. These, again, are all very, very uncommon, but they can occur. So if the symptom is very, very mild, I suggest we avoid that treatment. Most other attacks, you know, if there's vision impairment, if there's motor dysfunction, if the gait is impaired, if the patient has some incoordination, or even if they only have sensory symptoms but they're quite uncomfortable, then we typically recommend this course of steroids. Now, nowadays, most of those um, steroid administrations can be done out of the hospital. Um, they can often be done in an outpatient infusion center, in some offices. Um, if a patient has had problems with a steroid infusion in the past, um, then we like to do it in, in the hospital. Now, a lot of patients will improve very rapidly, even while they're getting that course of steroids, but in other cases, that improvement might be delayed for days or sometimes weeks, and some people will recover very gradually, uh, sometimes over many months. Now, what else can we do if a patient doesn't respond to steroids? Well, sometimes we give a second course of steroids, but if a patient is not responding to the steroids, and has a significant neurological deficit, we sometimes do a procedure called plasma exchange or plasmapheresis. And this, generally speaking, requires the patient to be in the hospital. And what you do is you remove the person's blood and you give back the cellular elements, the, the blood cells, but you exchange the plasma. And you do this every other day for approximately two weeks. And this seems to take out the evil humors from the blood. Uh, and leads to recovery in a significant percentage of patients, much, much higher percentage than people who get pretend plasma exchange. There is one other treatment on the market that's sometimes used for acute attacks, and that's uh, with a preparation of, of ACTH, or adrenocorticotrophic hormone. This is a hormone that causes the body's adrenal glands to produce more steroids. Now, this is an old treatment that's kind of been resurrected in, in recent years. It was replaced years ago by IV steroids. And it is an alternative, the pro and it has an advantage that patients can give it themselves by injection under the skin. Um, they can do it at home. The big problem is that it's enormously expensive, and there's not any evidence that it works better than intravenous methylprednisolone. So it's generally only used in special circumstances today. So, so when should someone call you when they're having an attack for these therapies to be employed? So I advise patients when I first make a diagnosis about what an attack is, and I explain to them that usually an attack lasts 24 hours or longer. And so certainly if they get a symptom that's persistent for that length of time, we want to hear about it. But I also emphasize to them that if they get a symptom that lasts even shorter that they have some concern about, please give us a call. and We'll often be able to, you know... Um, assure them over the phone that, that this is not an attack, or conversely tell them, well, this is something that we should keep an eye on, maybe we want to see you. And is there a window in which you would treat the attack and a point at which you say, no, we don't need to do it any longer? 
Well, I don't think this has been, you know, very clearly defined. We, most attacks come on rapidly. That's the characteristic of attack, typically over a matter of a few days, sometimes over, over weeks. But seldom does an attack develop over many months. That's more characteristic of a progressive course of the disease. And we, we think that treating early is probably going to be more effective because what we're trying to do is treat the acute inflammation, and that's going to be more likely to be prominent early on. And what about what are called pseudo-attacks? So when, uh, when people's body temperature becomes elevated for any reason, new neurological symptoms can develop or they can get worsening or a recurrence of symptoms that they've had in the past. This happens because the, the nervous tissue is damaged but not damaged to the point that it doesn't function properly under normal body temperature. When body temperature becomes elevated, these partially damaged nerve fibers don't conduct impulses as well, and one can develop symptoms. So this typically happens if a person gets a fever, for example, for, for any reason, but sometimes happens if a person gets overheated for other reasons. Just vigorous exercise, particularly on a warm day, may cause transient um, symptoms, typically lasting minutes and going away when a person cools down. There's a name for that. We call that UTOPS phenomenon. But the situation of pseudo-relapses or pseudo-exacerbations is really the occurrence of new symptoms in the setting of a fever or infection, and they, they will go away when the fever comes down.